everything that I'm getting ready to share with you is the best that I found, except for one thing that I'm actually gonna be moving away from and trying to find a replacement for. The very first thing on the list is Camtasia. Because of the nature of my content, I do tons of screen recording. In fact, I've been using Camtasia for my screen recording and light video editing since I started my channel back in 2014. And that is because I can do screen recording that highlights the cursor of my mouse so it makes everything really easy to follow. You can zoom in and out to make sure that your viewers can easily see what you want them to see. You can draw boxes around items or spotlight them to make sure that you're bringing attention to the things you want people to focus on. You can have animated arrows point to things. You can blur out anything that you need to blur out for privacy reasons, or again, just to maintain focus on what you want viewers to be looking at. You can also record your camera and your screen at the same exact time so that once you're done with your screen recording, you have everything that you need right there in the file, and then you can just go ahead and get to work on editing everything together so you can get it up onto YouTube. But in addition to screen recording, they are a very easy to use video editing solution. So if you are somebody that's just getting started with YouTube and you don't want the complications of just like really crazy software, when you open it up, you're just intimidated by everything. Camtasia is a great solution because it's really easy to use and it doubles up as a screen recorder too. I have a link down in the description with a discount code if you want to check out Camtasia for yourself, as well as everything else that I'm going to be talking about in the rest of this video. For channel optimization and management, I use two tools. The very first is TubeBuddy. I use TubeBuddy to help me come up with video ideas in terms of looking for things that are not as competitive. I use TubeBuddy to A-B test my thumbnails, which is basically where you upload two different thumbnails and then TubeBuddy gives you a report and lets you know which thumbnails are the most effective and where on YouTube they're the most effective. Super valuable. I also use TubeBuddy for brand alerts, which means if somebody says something about me on YouTube somewhere, TubeBuddy will let me know about it. And of course, because tags are not that important on YouTube anymore, I use TubeBuddy to help me just quickly put my tags together so I don't have to spend tons of time researching tags and figuring out the right ones to use. The next one on the list for channel optimization and management and really distribution as well is TubeSpanner. I look at TubeSpanner like it's my YouTube assistant because it helps me with these things. In the browser extension, there's an upload assistant that helps me upload more efficiently. There's a bio page. It's actually the first and only one dedicated specifically to content creators, but this helps me connect my social media accounts. You can see this in action at nimin.bio. I can schedule or share the scheduling of my YouTube videos without having to leave YouTube. I can see what my thumbnails look like embedded into YouTube before I even upload to make sure that I'm putting out something that's competitive or at least something that will stand out on the homepage. And it also has a ton of really helpful tools that all of the other tools don't have. Next on my list is live streaming. So one thing that I do a ton on my YouTube channel, I actually do it more than I upload video content these days, at least at the time of this recording, live streaming. And since I do a ton of live streaming, I need to make sure that my streams are reliable, that the stream is consistent, that I can run everything easily and I don't have to worry about anything. For this, I use a service called StreamYard. They do all the hosting for me in the cloud, which means if I have a problem with my computer, then they're gonna hold everything open for me so I can come back in on my phone or whatever while I'm waiting for my internet or my power to come back on. That feature alone has saved me so many times. They make it really easy to bring guests onto my live streams with just a few clicks. I can easily add graphics or videos or even background music if I want to using StreamYard. And another super valuable feature when it comes to StreamYard is they record everything in the background. So anytime I live stream, I have a copy that is saved on their end that I can download later. So if I want to repurpose any of that to anything else, I can do it. On the live streaming side, when I do my news segment on my YouTube channel, one thing that I'll use for that is OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. And the reason that I use that is because I do some green screen stuff, which is also possible inside of StreamYard. However, I need to adjust the position of where I am in the frame. And I'm also using like a foot pedal and all this other crazy stuff to kind of switch things around. So because of that, what I do is I have OBS that I run everything through, and then I will port that into StreamYard using OBS camera, and then I use StreamYard to actually broadcast it out so that I have the stability and the other advantages that I told you just a second ago. For my content calendar and how we keep track of what videos are being published where and who's editing what and things like that, we use Monday.com. To be honest, I've been using Monday.com for quite some time and I'm not thrilled with them. So because of that, I'm gonna be looking for another solution, probably Notion is what I'm gonna end up going with. For writing scripts or bullet points and keeping track of all of that, I use a lot of Google Docs. So with Google Docs, I'll use them sometimes just for video ideas. I'll use Google Docs to just write out some quick bullet points. If I'm doing like a very detailed script, then I might go into TubeSpanner for that. But if I'm doing something to where it's just bullet points with maybe just some notes of some additional things that I'm gonna say, in that case, I'll end up using Google Docs. Now, as a content creator, we get lots of comments. So in order to manage those effectively and just to make it easy, I use Creator Studio app by 
by YouTube. Now within this app, in case you're not familiar with it, if you're new to YouTube, you can upload videos into it. You can change your titles, descriptions, thumbnails, all of that right on your mobile device. But the main thing I use it for is just a quick look at stats and also to be able to manage comments quickly because personally, I find it more comfortable to be able to just sit there and do everything on the phone instead of having to like fire up a computer and sit there and answer comments, you know, looking at the computer instead of just doing it while I'm doing other things. Now, when it comes to YouTube Shorts, if I'm doing something quick and dirty, then in that case, I'll usually record it directly onto my phone using Spark Camera. And then within Spark Camera, it allows you to record in clips for all the different things that you say. So it makes it to where you can pretty much auto edit a video as you're putting it together, which is pretty awesome and great for getting things done quickly. Or if I'm on my phone, depending on exactly what it is that I'm doing, I'll use either Video Leap or CapCut. To make thumbnails, I use Photoshop exclusively for this, but I know Photoshop does come with a heavy learning curve. So if you are looking for a solution for thumbnails, you can use TubeSpanner for this, or you can use Canva for this as well. They're both great solutions if you're just getting started with this stuff. For audio processing, depending on what computer I'm on and what it is exactly that I'm working on, I'll use either Adobe Audition, I'll use Audiate, or I will use Logic Pro. So it just depends on exactly what it is that I'm working on. If I'm doing a voiceover, or if I'm like recording some type of promotional video, or if I'm doing it for the videos that you're watching now, it just kind of depends on exactly what it's for. I'll use one of those three different options. When it comes to video editing, if it's something quick and easy, and especially if a screen recording has been attached to it, then I'll use Camtasia. But if it's not something like that, if it's something where it's gonna be like a pretty intense video, then in that case, I'll just send it over to Vigard who edits the videos. He's actually this guy that you see on screen right now. What's up, Vigard? <laughs> And he does an amazing job, as you can see, if you've gotten this far in the video. If any background music needs to be added to the content, then I'll use creatormix.com for that. That's our free music service. You can use this as well for free. It's made by my brother D and myself. Or if I need a lot of sound effects, then I'll use Epidemic Sound. For B-roll that I can legally use in my videos, I'll use Storyblocks or Motion Array. And the reason I use both of those is because they've been around for a really long time and they have so much footage in them. It's just ridiculous what you can find in there. To to manage my YouTube channel memberships, I use a service called Members Amp that is currently not available to the public at the time of this recording, but as soon as it is, I'll have a link down in the description to that as well. And hey, by the way, if you wanna see a video on the cameras that I use and all the rest of the setup, just let me know down in the comments so that I know that you want that video before I make it. But in the meantime, click into this playlist right here for even more YouTube tools that will help you in all different aspects of your YouTube channel. You can go ahead and click into that now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.